this video we're going to look at field of view. Now I touched upon this very briefly in part one, but now's the time to get to grips with it. And in part two, we're going to look at the role of field of view in composing your scenes and what it can do to help you uh, provide a sense of scale. Now, it's not so much about things looking either big or small as a result of field of view. It tells you more about how far away you are from an object. Starting with this uh, default scene again, and here's our alien, Vic is in the background ready to help us. And the first thing I want to do is show you that in Bryce, the field of view, which is represented, and we'll switch the overhead view here, um, in the perspective camera by these uh, dotted lines, uh, the report given here is not necessarily very helpful. If you want to know more about that value and how it is determined, if you visit Horro's website and go to ray tracing and knowledge and field of view, then you've got a bit of a technical breakdown there that will help you determine exactly, if you get your calculator out, what the field of view is. But we're not worried about that, we're just going to do it by eye and discuss the implications. So, to determine the field of view where we are now, I'm going to use a cylinder. So here's our cylinder. Now that's coming at the world origin, but I'm just going to uh, shuffle that out of the way uh, along the z-axis a bit and modify its attributes, unlock its origin, reset the origin to zero. In fact, I'll show the origin as, as a handle here so you can see. And if I copy and paste that and then modify uh, the attributes of the copy to 120 degrees, that figure uh, is more or less what I reckon well, you can see uh, in a human field of view. So if you hold your arms uh, out and you try and see your f fingers moving just out of the corner of your vision, move your arms back and forwards, roughly speaking, you can see 120 degrees or thereabouts. I'm not too worried about the exact figure, we're just setting this up roughly. So I'm positioning the origin of those two cylinders to coincide roughly with the origin of our camera and you can see now that the current setting for the perspective camera is rather narrower than 120 degrees. So for this aspect ratio image uh, I'll just widen our field of view and we'll see right there I can see one of the cylinders. I'll just move this around so this is like the experiment we're doing with our arms. Okay I'll just move these around until I can see just just the bit of each cylinder. So if I check my camera attributes now and say that about 145 degrees for this uh, aspect ratio document aspect ratio image will give me about 120 degrees along the uh, along the ground there. So if I was Vicky stood here, that would be the full extent of what I would view. Though bearing in mind any images we're seeing on the internet, uh, generally speaking, photographs and cameras have different field of views, but we're going to look at these extremes of field of views to see what they can do for us. So uh, there's two situations we want to consider here. Uh, the one is that we are small and looking at a giant structure and the other that we are looking down at a small structure. So I've got Vicky here and I'll copy and paste her so we can have uh, both extremes and she's just stood in the background there. I'm using in the side view to help me position my camera. So there she is looking down at this little scene that's one Vicky and I'll get this other group here and I'll shrink her down and place her down on the ground looking up at this monstrous alien and this uh, giant weird box structure so I'm just uh, shrinking her down and then we'll have a look at our field of view situation so we'll start with looking at something big. So we know, whoops, I can't see the camera. I want the horizon in there, don't I? I'll just move in a bit. I'll put it up there, zoom in again. Right, I'll place it roughly where her eye level is. Switch to the view and uh, tilt the camera up. I'm going to move it sideways. I'm not altering the height, that's the key thing. And we'll have a look now. So the thing to notice is that with this extreme uh, field of view, we're, we're only just managing to see all the things in this scene because we're stood close to it. So this is like, these things are vast and uh, you'll notice that this cube which is closest to us looks about twice the size of this cube that's further away and higher up. And this is the kind of thing you would expect 
expect with this extreme perspective. So this is telling you that you're either close to this or it's huge because here we are there's Vicky it's huge and uh, closer to we get to it we get the more extreme this um, this I think foreshortening effect becomes so here I'll, I'll focus on the alien because he'll show this up nicely look at the size of his feet compared to his head look at the size of his fingers his hands look huge the one that's reaching towards us and this one looks much smaller so this shows us that we're very close to this figure and what tells us that this figure is a, a giant is the fact that the eye line here is intersecting with his feet so it tells us that if, if we were stood in this scene then we'd only just come up to the bottom of his feet so if I can find Vicky to help me out here come on, Vicky right and bring her into this scene stood next to the alien's foot right and then I have to shrink her down so that her eyes are on the horizon so she's, she's gonna look really small right and um, I've lost my drop control there we go it's a bit fiddly so roughly there that says this is a, a massive alien monster we're probably in trouble right extreme version number two so I'm going to have to zoom back a bit here, get hold of my camera, lift it up to where our eyes are, and then point it down at our scene. And now this shows us why we're going to need an arrow of field of view to express this scene. Here, when on our human scale, we're looking down. These things are on the carpet below us or whatever, and they are only occupying a small portion of the scene. So in order for this to effectively fill our scene, since this is our subject, we're going to have to narrow the field of view. What happens here to tell us that we're further away from these things and since we're looking down that solved our horizon problem so is that if I focus on the alien again what we have is a situation where the head and the feet and the hands are all relatively in proportion because the overall distance between the camera there to the subject is large and the, dis and the proportion of the distance between the subject's head and its feet is, uh, is the, the distance is quite similar, so the proportion is closely related, then this tells us that our camera is further away. We've narrowed the field of view to fill the screen, so therefore we're either very high up in a helicopter looking down at this monster, because there's Vicky, she's quite small, or this thing's just small. And without any other visual clues, we can't really say much more about the situation than that. Whereas in the previous situation where we, we could see the horizon, then we knew a lot more about the relative relationship between these and us. So there you go. as a simple breakdown of the your choices with field of view and how they can help influence uh, what people interpret about the scale of your scene. So generally speaking, in a landscape, wide field of view, horizon quite low behind your objects, and you're looking up a bit and this will give the impression that things you're looking at are large if you're looking at small things you need to get above them point down with a fairly narrow field of view and that's uh, the two extremes there right uh, later on um, in part three we'll look at combining this with depth of field this is another camera effect it's a premium effect so it can take quite a long time to render if you're going to do it in Bryce that you can also achieve the same effect in post work and this also provides visual clues about how large the things are scaled in your scene so I hope that's helpful for you and you want to employ these techniques in your scenes